for the Army to talk to, not, not me. Okay, one last question. An Army major was reportedly drugged and bitten by strippers in Poland. Will that affect the U.S. military's footprint in that country? <laughs> it is a major story, and it happened in Gdansk. Jeff, I don't know anything about uh, that story. I'll, I'll have a, a, a look at it. I'm not going to take that question. But well, please take that question. Jeff, no, 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 Jeff, just let me state clearly we have a, a strong military relationship uh, with, with Poland, and, uh, and we expect to see that continue to, to grow and to improve. But I don't, know, I don't know anything about this particular item. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to go. I do have a uh, hard stop here at 4 o'clock, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to call it there. But thank you very much. Appreciate it. I could tell. No, I could tell he was serious about it. No, we have the story. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go take a look at it. This country just elected a 50-50 Senate a very closely divided house, and a president who talked a big game about cutting deals, bringing people together, and building bridges. But even on subjects as historically bipartisan as pandemic relief, voting rights, and infrastructure, our Democratic friends have become addicted to divide and conquer. As our distinguished colleague, Senator Tim Scott, put it last night, they won't even build bridges to build bridges. Well, it doesn't have to be this way, Madam President. Republicans support actually competing with China. Republicans support actually helping working families. Republicans support actual infrastructure. Ranking Member Capito and a number of our leading Republican colleagues have rolled out a multi-hundred billion dollar targeted infrastructure proposal. Today, in fact, the Senate is set to pass bipartisan legislation to help states and localities provide clean and safe drinking water. Our president will not secure a lasting legacy through go-it-alone radicalism. He won't get much done that way. It won't be good for the country. And whatever the Democrats do get done through partisan brute force will be fragile. The American people need us to find common ground and to move this country forward. And they would like for us to do it. We have also delivered support directly to small businesses. Because, of course, small businesses are part of the fabric and the culture of a community. Baltimore knows that well. Our small businesses employ about half of America's workers. And making sure small businesses have and have access to capital is a big part of the work that I have been doing. I am proud to report that we have provided relief to 4 million small businesses in our country. Which brings me then to jobs. In 100 days, we have created more new jobs than any other administration in history. In Baltimore, we are just getting started. Right now, we have two more plans that we are working to get passed. The first is the American Jobs Plan. It will be the largest job investment that our nation has made since World War II. Because the fact is, too many people, including too many people right here in Maryland, are still out of work. So while we have made significant process, progress on the jobs front, there's so much more to be done. We are going to put Americans to work, fixing the roads you drive on every day getting rid of the lead pipes that poison our children, and expanding broadband so that every American has access to high-speed and affordable high-speed internet. In the 21st century, broadband... We have to do more than just build back better. We build back, we have to build back better. We have to compete. I think it's not important. Check out in your own district. Democrat or Republican, Democrat or Republican voters, their great concern, almost as much as their children, is taking care of an elderly loved one who can't be left alone. Medicaid contemplated it, but this plan is going to help those families 
and create jobs for our caregivers with better wages and better benefits, continuing a cycle of growth. For too long, we've failed to use the most important word when it comes to meeting the climate crisis. Jobs. 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 For me, when I think climate change, I think jobs. If you think about this country, I don't know of any other country in the world that was settled predominantly by people who were coming to practice their faith. They came here because they were not allowed to practice their particular faith in their own country. And so they came here mostly from Europe and they set up a country that was based on Judeo-Christian principles. When I say Judeo-Christian, the Mosaic laws, 10 commandments, and the teachings of Jesus Christ, the, moral, the morals and, and teachings of Jesus Christ. That's, that's what our founding documents are based upon. It's in our DNA. You know, if you think of other countries like Italy and Greece and China and Turkey and places like that, they've all sort of changed over time. I mean, they've been, they've been there for, cent, for millennia in many cases. And their culture has sort of evolved over time. But not us. We came here and created a blank slate. We, we birthed a nation from nothing. I mean, there was nothing here. I mean, yes, we have Native Americans, but, if, but candidly, that, that, there isn't much Native American culture in America.